after studying this module, you shall be able to know what are the components of blood, what are the methods for identification of origin of blood, what are the methods for estimation of age of blood and what are the different factors that affect the change in color of blood. Introduction to blood. What is blood? Blood is a complex fluid tissue composed of a liquid portion called plasma and the cellular components. It delivers necessary substances such as nutrients and oxygen to the cells and transports metabolic waste products away from those same cells. Plasma is a mixture of the dissolved proteins, salts and other chemicals. Composition of blood. The blood cells are of three types that is the red blood cells, the RBCs or the erythrocytes, white blood cells also known as WBCs or the leukocytes and platelets also known as thrombocytes. Erythrocytes are manufactured in the bone marrow. In mammalian blood, biconcave disc shaped cells are found because the cells do not retain their nucleus before entering the circulatory system. The usual average count of the RBCs is 4.5 to 5.4 million cells per milliliter. The diameter and thickness of each human cell that is the red cell is about 7.5 micrometers and 2 micrometer respectively. Antigens present in the human red cell are also known as agglutinogens. RBCs or the red blood corpuscles function to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide and are packed with the complex compound hemoglobin. The heme molecule present in hemoglobin imparts red color to the erythrocytes. The presence of the heme molecule in a stain determines whether the blood is present in the sample of unknown origin or not. The WBC count of a healthy human adult is about 4000 to 10,000 white blood cells per milliliter. WBCs or the white blood corpuscles or the leukocytes are of various types and they function as body's defensive mechanism. The common type that is present in abundance is the granulocytes or the polymorphonuclear leukocytes. Many granulocytes comprise of the neutrophilic granules or the neutrophils. A small number of them comprise the granules which stain with acid dyes the eosinophils and several granules stain with the basic dyes that is the basophils. Other type of WBCs found are the cells having large round nuclei and little cytoplasm or the lymphocytes and monocytes, cells with abundant cytoplasm and kidney shaped nuclei. Genetic marker analysis of blood is probable as DNA can be taken out from these nucleated leukocytes. Small granulated bodies are also known as platelets are also present in blood. The human blood contains about 3 lakh platelets per milliliter having a diameter of 2 to 4 micrometers. The cells are involved in the blood clotting mechanism, blood stains. At a violent crime scene, the most important type of evidence found are the blood stains. For the purpose of reconstruction of the crime scene, the popular molecular biology methods for DNA identification and the blood pattern analysis can also be employed. At the scene of crime, for example, in cases of assault, murder, child abuse, burglary, rape, robbery, etc., 
blood stains are usually found. Here often forensic scientists are called upon so as to examine the items of physical evidence, the clothing, vehicles, etc. and also to regulate whether a victim's blood or that of the suspect has been removed from the crime scene. The various types of question that a forensic scientist need to answer while examining the blood evidences are is it blood? If it is blood, is it human? If it is human, what information towards individualization is possible? Identification of origin of blood stain. It is important for a forensic scientist to determine if the concerned stain is blood or not and if it is blood whether it is of human origin or that of animal origin. Supposedly if the blood is of human origin then we will have to examine it differently and supposedly if the blood is not of human origin then it is very necessary to do the species origin test for the concerned blood stain so as to determine the species. Most methods in common use for determining the species of origin are the immunological methods or that are immunological in nature. If an animal is injected with a protein molecule from another species, it will sometimes recognize this protein as a foreign substance that is antigen and will produce an antiserum or the antibody that responds with such protein in both vivo and in vitro. The most commonly used methods for species determination in forensic laboratories are the serum method, octolone double diffusion method, crossover electrophoresis, rapid immunoassay that is a t-test sample with a positive result C that is the positive control, human DNA quantitation that is the slot blot showing various positive DNA quantization or the concentration standards, negative control and positive test sample serum method. The in vitro antibody antigen response is identified through the development of an antigen antibody complex and three elements are needed for this reaction to happen. They are antiserum, the blood stain extract or the antigen and the buffer. Conditions at which a precipitin reaction is done such as the ion strength, temperature, incubation time and pH have a direct influence on the formation of the precipitin band. For example, the most favorable temperature is usually between 25 degrees Celsius to 37 degrees Celsius and the optimal pH is between 7 and 8. However, the rigorous settings that are ideal for a system should be known for every new antigen antibody system under analysis. The specificity of the antiserum plays the most important role in species determination. When the antiserum is commercially prepared, presence of the contaminating antibodies may result in serious error. Hence, it is required that the specificity of the antisera in use is known. Human antiserum is prepared by inoculating hemoglobin or the human serum in various animals. The most frequently used antisera made through this method are formed from rabbits, goats or sheep. These antisera produce a stable precipitate. Monoclonal antibodies are also commercially available for the species testing. To ensure the specificity of the antiserum, it is imperative that laboratory scientists select by direct testing for the cross-reactivity and to determine the strength of the antiserum by a titration method. Use.
required for a reliable species determination octoloni double diffusion method this diffusion method was the first described by octoloni in the year 1949 it involves the use of agar gel plates with wells for both the antibodies and the antigens the two reactants diffuse into the gel wherein the soluble antigens and the antibodies from the insoluble complex forms a precipitate the reactants can be evaluated both qualitatively and semi quantitatively by this technique precipitate band formation gives the scientist the considerable information regarding the identity partial identity or the non identity of the antigen and antibody reaction it also yields information on the diffusion coefficients and concentration of the reactants crossed over electrophoresis this method can be employed for the qualitative and quantitative determination of the blood samples in crossed over electrophoresis the antigen and the antibody migrate towards each other under the influence of the electric field thereby forming a precipitant band at the point of their interaction a small wells about 1.5 mm in diameter are punched in the agar gel plate the stain extract is placed in the cathodic well of a neighboring pair and the antiserum in the opposite well the antiserum travels towards the cathode having the negative electrode while the stain migrates towards the anode having the positive electrode a precipitant band will form at the site of the interaction of the antibodies and the antigens white line precipitant band means more antiserum and the blood match rapid immunoassay method immunoassay test strips for human being blood has become available commercially on past years the immunological precipitant test for medical legal species purpose was first used in the year 1901 these investigations propose high sensitivity and specificity as confirmatory tests for the existence of the human blood in stain extracts such procedures involve the reaction of the antigens in the extract with the monoclonal antibodies within the test strip the collective antigen antibody complex transfers of the strip to an extent where it is arrested the complex counters with dye elements in the part where it has been seized to form the evident reactions some assays make belt and positive controls on the test strips these tests have described sensitivity of about 0.05 micrograms hemoglobin per milliliter and thus are very suitable for use with highly dilute stain extracts or the older stain materials rapid immunoassay procedures are highly specific easily performed applicable to various types of samples and produce results in a timely manner usually within minutes of applications to the test strips this last feature allows for the confirmation of the blood in supernatants of samples which will be subjected to dna analysis prior to the testing and without consumption of the stain portions necessary for obtaining the dna sample such rapid assays also prevent extensive delay in genetic marker testing rapid confirmation of human blood may also be conducted at crime scenes by the trained personnel 
The disadvantage of this method is that the reported high dosage effects may yield false negative results also. Human DNA quantitation. A sample can be determined to be blood of human origin by reaction with a probe specific for human DNA. Probes complementary to the primate specific DNA sequences such as these found at the locus of D17Z1 are readily available and used primarily to determine the amount of human DNA extracted from a sample prior to DNA typing. DNA extracted from a sample is spotted on a membrane along with the known concentrations of human DNA. After reaction with the human specific probe, results obtained from the unknown sample are compared to the signal intensity of the known standards. The amount of the human DNA in the sample can be estimated in this manner also. The sensitivity of the human DNA quantitation test is commonly in the 0.15 to 0.20 nanograms range when the color segment detection method is employed. One disadvantage of this technique is that the human DNA from any tissue or cell will produce a positive reaction. Thus, it is very necessary to determine that the DNA obtained is from blood by using one of the heme identification techniques. Effect is readily avoided by approximate dilution of the sample prior to the application of the stain extract to the test strips. Age estimation of the blood stains. The age estimation of the blood stains recovered from a crime scene could provide valuable information relating to the timeline of a violent crime and could lead to the inclusion or the exclusion of the persons of interest during an investigation. Currently, there are no such established techniques to provide the robust and reliable age estimation of the blood stains found at the crime scene. The visual method. As the blood stains increase in age, they progress through a series of color change starting from red to reddish brown, then to green, eventually dark brown and then black. The change in the color of the fresh blood stain from bright red to dark brown as it ages is well known. The chemical process underlying this change has been found to be due to the oxidation of the oxyhemoglobin that is formed when hemoglobin comes in contact with the oxygen in air. Relative contribution of the oxyhemoglobin, the methemoglobin and the hemichrome changes with time. The ages of the blood stains up to 2 years old were also estimated. The accuracy decreases with time or age was also studied and the important new information about the temporal aspects of the crime were also studied and this can be visualized with the help of the graph where we have given the relative contributions of the oxyhemoglobin, the methemoglobin and the hemichrone changes with time. Instrumental methods. Two methods are used. The first is based on the statistical model that identifies the spectral wavelengths at which the greatest changes take place and then uses these for a predictive model based on linear discriminant analysis or the LDA method. The second method uses a wavelength ratio to create a false color scale that can then be used to visualize or indicate the age of the blood stains. LDA method. As the LDA model uses more wavelength, its accuracy is greater. Daily measurements have been made on the blood stains kept under controlled environmental conditions over a one month period. The LDA model is able to predict the age of a test blood stain with an average error of approximately one day over a one month period. The 
false color method shows visible daily changes in color over the first six days after which the color changes over two to three day time period. Herein, the figure shows an example of the color changes between 0 to 21 days. Analysis of the rate of change of the spectra shows that the greatest change actually occurs over the first day of aging and this greater accuracy can be obtained for measurements over a one day time period. To test this, the measurements on the blood stains were done on an hourly basis over a period of 22 hours and both the LDA method and the false color method were used to predict the age of the blood stains. The LDA method or the LDA model gave an average accuracy of approximately 0.7 hours over a 22 hour time period while for the false color method the variable changes in the color of the blood stain could be observed hourly over the first 10 to 15 hours. Either of these methods has the potential to be used as an alternative way of estimating the post-mortem interval for violent crimes where blood stains are present or to individually estimate the time of a series of events involving the blood spatter. The hyperspectral imaging method. Instruments based on visible wavelength hyperspectral imaging method may provide the means of making such measurements. These are currently being investigated and developed at TSEED University in the United Kingdom. They rely on the visible spectrum of hemoglobin that is present in the red blood cells or the RBCs. The spectrum between 400 to 600 nanometers is dominated by a relatively sharp peak centered at approximately 415 nanometers that is usually known as the Soret band while two weaker peaks around 540 and 575 nanometers called the B and the A peaks respectively are also present. The Soret band is used positively to identify the blood stains while the A and the B peaks are used for the larger estimation of the blood stains. The NIR spectroscopy that is in cases of what if people wear dark clothing. In this method FOSS NIR system of 6500 spectrometer is used. Reflectance spectra of blood stains on the colored cotton has to be measured. The estimated using least square fit parameters determines the partial least squares regression test set containing the blood stains on one color and the training set containing the blood stains on all other colors. The factors that change the color of blood. The methodology for the age estimation of the blood stains needs further measurements and developments as the current aging measurements have been made under controlled environmental conditions to allow the underlying chemical change to be accurately studied. However, the aging process is likely to depend on the environmental variables such as temperature, humidity and light intensity as well as physical variables such as substrate. Given that these variables will be uncontrolled at crime scenes, it will be necessary to make further measurements to investigate the effects of these variables based on the process of aging. Therefore, based on the possible dependencies, it must be possible to create blood stains aging model that will take into account the actual or the estimated environmental and the physical conditions at a crime scene. Blood is defined as the complex fluid tissue comprising of a liquid portion, plasma and the other cellular components. The blood cells are mainly divided into three that is the RBCs or the erythrocytes, WBCs or the leukocytes, platelets or the thrombocytes. At a violent crime scene, the most important type of evidence found in the blood stains. 
for the purpose of reconstruction of the crime scene, the popular molecular biology methods for DNA identification and blood pattern analysis can also be employed. The most commonly used methods for species determination in forensic laboratories are the serum method, octolony double diffusion method, crossed over electrophoresis, rapid immunoassay and lastly the human DNA quantitation that is the slot blot showing various positive DNA concentration standards, the negative control and the positive test samples. And lastly, some methods are there to determine the age of the blood stains that are the visual method, the instrumental methods, etc.